Hello everyone, my name is Andrew. I'm a software developer and instructor for Angular Bootcamp and Oasis Digital. Today I'm going to talk about extending an Angular application with Electron. Um, so the idea here in this video is slightly different from how Electron is typically used. Um, usually when you make an Electron app, you want to create um, a you know, web application with your framework of choice and then include all of its assets in the Electron application. Um, in this video, um, the idea is a little bit different where you have a remotely hosted web application and you want to add some features to that web application and run it inside the Electron app. Um, why would somebody want to do this? Uh, one potential application is if you have a customer who has a legacy application that they want to interface th their new web application with. So the legacy application would be a native application like a, a desktop app and uh, they want the web application to interact with this application. Um, so one way to do that is to actually run the web app as an Electron application and then add those native features using Electron or Node. Uh, so one of the main sources of uh, information on how to actually do the main part of this, which is to create a bridge in the window object, is this um, Medium article um, by Cameron Noakes. It's a very good article, I uh, highly recommend reading it. Um, basically, it describes the main idea um, behind this video. Uh, so in addition to what he describes in this article, I'm also going to go over how to create the Electron Applications project from the ground up. Uh, so let's take a look at the project that I've made uh, for this video. Um, this is a project that, create, uh, that contains two folders in it, one for the Angular application and one for the desktop application, which is the Electron app. So looking at the desktop folder, um, I have three JSON files for setting up my project, package.json, tsconfig, and tslint. Uh, the last one being sort of an optional um, file that you'd want to add if you want to use linting to improve your code quality. Uh, but the package.json contains uh, what's really going on in this application. Uh, so I have uh, defined several scripts which help running and building the Electron app. So the first script is start, and this will actually run the application with Electron uh, without building it. So first it does a compile, so it compiles TypeScript into JavaScript. So in this example, I'm actually writing all of my code in TypeScript, um, which gives me my nice type support and makes it consistent with the Angular app. And then I actually run the compiled files with the uh, Electron uh, package. There's a build script that I've defined, which also does a compile and then runs Electron Builder um, by specifying build. And this will run all of the build. Um, this will build all of the executables that I have defined. And uh, you can define the settings for build either in a separate JSON file or right in the package JSON. And so here I'm doing it in the package JSON, and that's what this build section is for. I have a lint script, and finally I have the compile script. And so here I'm using a CLI tool called RimRap to clean the uh, compiled directory uh, before running the actual TypeScript compiler. And so looking at the dependencies for this project, um, I actually don't have any uh, non-dev dependencies. So all of the dependencies for the Electron application at this point are dev dependencies. Uh, so I have a dependency on Electron. And um, right before I created this video, Electron 3 came out, so we're using Electron 3. Um, I also use Electron Builder, and this is a very convenient way to create the um, executables. And I'm using NPX to call the Electron Builder. Uh, RimRap for that convenient um, RM-RF feature, that's just the recursive um, uh, remove files call uh, that's platform independent. Uh, I'm also bringing in tslint in the TypeScript compiler. So in my build settings, um, this is for the Electron Builder, uh, I define uh, everything that um, I want it to create and how I want it to configure those uh, executables. So I've given my uh, build a name, and I've also defined the platforms to build. So I'm only building for Windows right now, and that's what this win is for. And then I pass in the targets for uh, this um, platform. So here I have, in the first one, I have NSIS, which creates a Windows installer. 
and then also I'm creating a portable executable. I'm also uh, using an icon file to give the application an icon. I am including my compiled JavaScript files, which actually are the code that run in the Electron app. <clears throat> and then for each type of executable, I've defined some settings for them. Um, so this is important for setting a different name for the executable for each of those um, for each of those uh, builds. Otherwise, they will override each other when they run, resulting in only one executable being built. And there's a whole bunch of uh, settings that you can choose for the installer, which I won't go into, but they typically allow you to do what you want to do. Um, they're, they're fairly configurable. Alright, um, so then there's the code files for the Electron app. Um, now, uh, in an Electron application, um, there's actually not just one process running like you'd have in a typical web app. There's actually several processes, and these are typically split up by files. So uh, there's a main process, which runs um, in the background and has access to all of the Electron and Node APIs. And there's also what's called render processes. And these correspond to each of your browser windows, which is a view that displays a web page or web application. And they talk to each other using uh, Electron's inter-process communication. Uh, I won't go into that in this video, but it's not actually very difficult to use. It's quite straightforward. Um, you simply pass messages back and forth between the different render uh, between the different processes, and that allows you to communicate between them. So in this application, I just am using the um, main process, and so I put all the code for that into index.ts. So looking at this file, um, I have a local variable for the browser window, and there will just be one browser window in this app. Um, this is where the web app will be rendered. And so I start with it undefined, and then at some point it's created. So the first thing that this does is it attaches the show window function to the ready event of the uh, Electron app, and where this app is actually the Electron application reference. <clears throat> And so um, whenever the application becomes ready, it will create and show the main window. So inside of the show window function, I create the browser window in this create window function. And I give it some settings such as where to place the window on the screen, how, um, uh, what its dimensions are, and then some preferences for the actual browser window. And there's a whole bunch of web preferences that should be set on an application like this for security reasons. Uh, one of them is to disable node integration, so that means that the web app won't have access to the node API. And that's important because you're loading, in this case, we're loading um, the web application from a remote location, so we don't have full control over what's actually in those files that we're running. So it's very important to have good security settings. Um, I won't go into detail on all the things that you need to set in an application like this because it would easily triple the length of this video. Um, but I will put links to good resources in the video description. Um, and these tell you um, most of the things that you need to switch um, or set in your application to um, sort of lock it down and make sure that your remote web app can't run amok on your system. Um, so. Once the window is created, um, I attach an unclosed handler to the window. So whenever the window is closed, it will run this function. Um, typically, when you have more than one browser window, you want to set the, the variable that references the browser window to undefined or null so that it can be garbage collected. Uh, if you keep the reference around, the browser window won't be garbage collected. So the Electron docs recommend doing this. And um, in this case, I only have one window, so whenever it closes, I want the app to exit. So I also call app.exit here. And so finally, after setting all that up, uh, I want to actually load the web app. So I call load URL on the window to load the web app locally. And I can put anything I want to here, any URL. And so this defines everything that runs on the main process. Um, now, in order to add features to the web application, I actually need to um, put code in to the web app that can be called. Uh, so the way that I do this is using what's uh, called in the Medium article and what I'll call here a uh, bridge. 
So I'm going to actually put this bridge object onto the window object of the um, web of the um, browser window. And so um, to do that, the browser window will actually preload a script to run before loading the web app with this load URL. So first it will call this, it will run this preload script, and then it will load the URL that I've defined on line 29. And so all of the code that I've put into this preload script um, is in this bridge.ts file, which gets compiled to bridge.js. And so here I'm, I'm pointing the preload um, the preload property to the path where this will live. In this case, this will be in the outts folder. Um, so this will be the compiled uh, version of that file. So looking at the bridge.ts, um, basically what I want to do is I want to attach new properties to the window object. So to do that, I've created an interface for the window that extends window, and I've called it app window. And since I'm going to use this in both the Electron app and the Angular app, I put them into a common location. So I call this folder common in the root level of the project, and the file I've made is called types. So in here, I've put the app window extends a window interface, and I've simply defined an optional property um, for my bridge. And so this other interface is for this bridge API. And since this is an API, it's a contract between my Angular application and my Electron application, um, I've gone ahead and versioned it so that I can keep things in sync as features are added or changed over time. And this will allow things to keep working and um, make the application less fragile um, as the project evolves. Um, so uh, I have inside of the bridge I have a single property called launch, and this is a function that will launch a local executable um, on the machine using the Electron, um, using the, the Electron application. So in my bridge, I have made a local variable uh, where I've uh, set it to the window, casted to app window, and um, I have, um, I'm attaching an object to the bridge v1 property that has the launch property. And this is a function that calls node's exec file function, which will execute a file or executable on the local file system. And I've passed the path to this executable. And here I'm using join to make a platform independent path to this executable. Although since I'm on Windows, I could have just as easily put the exact Windows path in without using this. In general, when you make paths, you want to do it in a platform independent way. And so this application will load the uh, will launch the calculator application uh, when this um, function is called. And so to use this in my Angular app, I've made a CLI application. Uh, so this is just an app module, an app component uh, application, as you'd see with any CLI app. And I've made an additional file, which is just a TypeScript file, nothing Angular specific about it. And here I'm doing a similar thing. Um, I am I'm creating a local variable for the window, and I'm casting it to app window, so that I have access to the, um, so that I have typing for the bridge that I've created. I have a variable defined called is electron, and this will be true whenever the bridge v1 property exists on the window object. And then I have a launch function, which will call that launch function in the bridge whenever the app is running as an electron app. And so in my component, I can set these two, <clears throat> these two variables to be properties on the component so that I can reference them in the template. And then the, in the template, I simply detect if the app is running as Electron with ngif. And on this button, I have the click handler calling the launch uh, function. And so let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Uh, so if I um, run the app, I'm currently running the CLI <clears throat> Um, uh, ng serve, so the application is being served on port 4200. So I can go ahead and do yarn start or npm start in the desktop app. And this will launch the application as Electron. Um, so here it's compiling uh, with the TypeScript compiler. And then it pulled up the Electron app on my other monitor. And so here I have the Angular app running, and we can see that it's detected that it's running as an Electron app. And I can click this button to launch the uh, Windows calculator. 
So uh, this is what the app will look like when running um, as Electron. And if I bring up the browser, you can go ahead and see what it looks like um, running uh, in the browser. So you can see that it's detected that the app is not running as an Electron app. And so it has not rendered the button to open the uh, calculator app. And that's really all there is to uh, running the Electron app. Um, I can also do yarn build to build the executables. So let me show what that looks like. So inside of the desktop folder, um, I have the uh, dist folder, which is where I've put, I've uh, had my scripts build to, and it creates this desktop uh, exe, which is the installer version of the application, and desktop portable, which is a portable version. And we can see that it's using my um, icon that I've defined. So if I launch the portable version, I can see what it looks like when it's been built. And so this is the Electron app. And uh, by default, when you have a built application, it will remove the um, menus. So when I'm running, uh, when I'm running it in dev mode, it will have menus uh, so that I can open things like the dev tools. Um, but you can you have full control over this in the API, so you can bring back the menus if you want to. And there's convenient packages to do that on npm um, that will bring back the default menus, so that you don't have to actually define all the menus yourself. Um, so yeah, this is what the application looks like when it's actually an executable. And again, I can click to launch the calculator app as before. So uh, yep, that's all there is to uh, extending your Angular application. Again, there's additional security settings that you really want to check out. So um, definitely look at the links in the description to make sure that um, you understand um, what all you need to do to make your application safe to actually deploy. Um, but beyond that, um, this is really how you can get started with Electron. It's a very straightforward and a very convenient way to add native functionality to your web app. So I hope that you found this useful, and thank you for watching.